The goal of the oscillator generator is to generate over time an oscillating value that can be applied to one-dimensional parameters. As an example, let's use the rotation parameter of this layer which represents a light bulb. Let's start by moving the layer's anchor point by pressing the Ctrl or Command key and placing it at the top of the cable holding the bulb. This bulb can then swing around this attachment point according to its rotation value. Let's click the generator button aligned with these parameters and add an oscillator. To clearly visualize the oscillations injected in this rotation parameter, we'll switch to Curve Editor mode and click on Rotation. In addition to viewing the graphical representation of this movement, we can press the play button to see the oscillation applied to this rotation parameter. By changing the amplitude parameter, we can generate oscillations with higher peak-to-peak -peak heights. As rotation values are higher, so is the distance covered by the bulb. Let's increase the value of this amplitude, from example 10 or even 15. Let's zoom in a little in the curve editor. Activate the layer's motion blur for a visually smoother animation and select rotation again to display the oscillation in the curve editor. The frequency parameter determines the horizontal and therefore temporal distance from one peak to another. Reducing this value will enlarge the oscillation and slow down the movement. If we increase this value, the peaks will be closer together and the movement faster. Before continuing, let's set this value back to 0.6 to ensure that the oscillation is not too fast. Let's take a look at the phase parameter. This shifts the entire oscillation horizontally to determine the starting value at the first frame. Let's move to the first frame and play with the phase to start the animation at the top of a peak. All oscillator parameters can be animated. For example, we can start with a high amplitude and animate it to decrease over time. Starting the animation with an amplitude of 15, actually oscillating from 15 to minus 15, we can then move forward, for example to 2 seconds, and change this amplitude value to 0. Keeping this amplitude variation will increase the frequency to have a greater number of oscillations before the bulb stabilizes. We can add as many keyframes as we like to the parameters, so after stabilizing the bulb, we can restart it with a new oscillation. We can also add multiple keyframes on the frequency parameter. However, these keyframes are only visible in dope sheet mode and it's difficult to see them in curve editor mode. But it is possible to use the keyframe button to jump from one keyframe to another. Remember that pressing this control or command key keeps this menu open, making it easier to jump from keyframe to keyframe. To remove all of these keyframes, we can use the Remove Animation function and then set the amplitude of this oscillation back to 15. Depending on the phase value, you'll be able to modify the frequency while keeping the peak aligned with the first frame of the animation. Let's reset this value to 0.7. We then have two buttons, Enable Minimum and Enable Maximum. By enabling the minimum, we see that no oscillation will be able to fall below the set value. We can also define a maximum value beyond which oscillation will be limited. Here, our light bulb gives the illusion to being blocked to the left and right by invisible walls that prevent it from going any further. Combining this constraint with multiple layers can produce some very interesting effects. Let's disable Enable Maximum and use only the minimum with a value of 0. Let's duplicate the layer, which will also duplicate the generator, and move the copy to the left so that the two bulbs are touching. Unfold the rotation parameters of this duplicated layer to see this new oscillator generator. Click again on the rotation parameter to see the evolution of rotation values in the curve editor. Uncheck the Enable Minimum option and activate Enable Maximum, assigning it a value of 0. Pressing the spacebar to launch the animation simulates a pendulum movement in which the two bulbs collide. 
Let's delete the duplicate of this layer, so we only have one bulb in our composition, and disable the enable maximum and minimum options. The mode parameter lets us choose the type of oscillation. Sine oscillation is very similar to cosine oscillation, the only difference being a quarter phase shift between the two modes. Sort of oscillation rises in a straight line from minimum to maximum, then falls back to the vertical. Square oscillation takes you from minimum to maximum without interpolation. Very convenient for flashing lights, for example. Finally, the triangle oscillation follows the peak of the scene signal. However, we can see that the progression is in a straight line, rather than damping on high or low peaks.